by Kamala Harris am heartbroken by the hurricane. It breaks my heart. My heart is heartbroken. So to help the victims of the hurricane, I'll be sending another $600 million to Ukraine. That way, you can feel safe knowing you're making a difference to people in need. Oh, uh, tell them about our immigration policy. The Kamala Harris campaign is officially in shambles and the Democrats are starting to worry. After a string of disastrous interviews with Howard Stern, Stephen Colbert, 60 Minutes, The View, all of which were supposed to be softball interviews to make her look good and appeal to the American people, have completely backfired, thus resulting in a huge sinking of the polls for good old Kamala. And as we can see over here, Emerson has their most recent poll where Trump is up two in Arizona, up one in Pennsylvania, up one in Georgia, up one in North Carolina, tied in Michigan, tied in Wisconsin, and down one in Nevada, okay? So all of these swing states seem to be breaking for Donald Trump, which of course has caused mass panic among those on the left. So let's go ahead and enjoy their discomfort as we check out these clips. But before we get into it, please like and comment on this video so we can break through the algorithms. Here we go. We have some new CNN reporting today about what is going on behind the scenes inside the Harris campaign and more broadly among Democrats who are growing more and more anxious about a 2016 redux. CNN's Priscilla Alvarez joins me now. Priscilla, uh, we were just joking here at the table that anxious Democrats happen on a day that ends in Y. <laughs> but this is, uh, this is something that perhaps is, is warranted given the data that they're seeing. Explain your great reporting. Yeah, look, that's exactly right, Dana. And this has been a campaign that was described by multiple Democrats, allies, aides uh, to the vice president as a good vibes campaign. But what's also creeping in now is that anxiety. The reason for that is because these polls are not really moving, despite multiple battleground blitzes, despite uh, the opportunities she has had uh, across media outlets. There is still not a lot of movement from voters who are moving more towards her versus former President Donald Trump. Uh, in fact, I had one source describe it to me this way, quote, people are nervous. They know the polls are tight. And a lot of us are having these flashbacks to 2016, too. We know when it can go the wrong way and it can still feel fresh. So 2016 is the key here. When I've talked to Harris campaign officials, it often comes up in conversation. Where did Hillary Clinton have her pitfalls uh, and where can they make up that ground and build on what Joe Biden did in 2020? One of those, to give you an example, is those red and rural districts. Look at, for example, Cambria County and Pennsylvania. Now, former President Donald Trump won in that county, but the former or President Biden was able to gain some ground there more than Hillary Clinton had in 2016. The vice president has already visited twice. And so that is the type of strategy that they're trying to deploy to try to make up that ground where they saw uh, Hillary Clinton wasn't able to in 2016. Then, too, there's the mobilizing. Talk to Democrats. They're always pretty boastful about their ground game. And they continue to be so. But that needs to turn into votes. So certainly uh, some anxiety and nerves setting in as Election Day gets closer and those polls uh, are just remain deadlocked. 2016, one of the greatest political upsets in history, okay? Donald Trump was the underdog. Hillary Clinton was the chosen one, right? There's a coronation around her. There was excitement, hope and joy, etc. all that stuff. And Donald Trump dashed it because the American MAGA movement, the populism of actually taking this country back and making it safe was a huge middle finger to the establishment that was ruining this country, okay? And guess what we're seeing today? That same exact situation, right? We have our inflation. We have our wide open border. We have chaos around the world. And what would be the biggest middle finger to all of the people who have propped this up, it would be once again, Donald Trump. Okay. And that is why they're afraid because they recognize that even though they have all of the left wing media in lockstep propping up Kamala Harris, it's just not going to be enough. And the numbers, once again, swinging back around are starting to reflect this. But of course, this isn't the only outlet in panic. Let's check this out from James Carville. November 5th. <laughs> I'm scared to death and I'll get a time to, you know, obviously. You're not in a reflective to, mood. Not in a particular reflective mood right now. I'm very, very concerned about What does care. Harris need to do with the month left? All right, she have a month left. Let, let's start. We've got 27, 26 days. Yep. The day is gone. You're going to lose four to the hurricane. Just mm. subtract that. We're going to get blank. You're not going to yep. be able to get much out for the next four days. So, and everything kind of shuts down to Saturday before the election. So you're really probably under 20 days mm. that you have to really get a message out. They need to be sharp. They need to be aggressive. They need to stop answering questions and start asking questions. 
they're doing all this and sitting down with 60 Minutes and sitting down with Colbert and sitting down with no matter what, if I come on your show, you're going to ask me the question. That's true. If I have a press conference, I get to ask the question. You'd like to see her do more press conferences? I'd like for her to put more things in play. Like where she's out where driving she's it. she's out saying, what is J.D. Vance talking about that Trump saved Obama? Okay, he tried to just destroy it at every point. I would put President Obama out to make that. He's only got a 92 percent approval with Democrats. He only is the author, or the father of 23 million people having insurance. I would have President Clinton talking, going on at these local TV stations, talking about how tariffs are going to destroy the, the mm. economy of Wisconsin or Michigan or anywhere else, because they have never worked. But we're just letting that go. And I think yeah. she and the whole campaign needs to be much more aggressive and much less passive than they are. You know, I asked you to look backward, uh, and you took your time and, and chose to look forward. And maybe that's something we could all learn from you, sir. Yes, that's James Carville saying he is scared to death. Just two days ago, I had a segment of him saying, oh, you Democrats, you're worrying over nothing. Kamala Harris has this in the bag. And now what's he saying? She's not being aggressive enough. Start giving more press conferences. Well, let's see, whose fault was that? After Kamala Harris became the candidate, she didn't give any type of interview or press conference, which she still hasn't, for a month. And then finally, when she started actually doing interviews, her poll number numbers drop. So the more she actually exposes herself to the public, the less people like her. It actually would have been to her benefit to do the Biden strategy. Just have the media try to carry you across the finish line because you're just not that good in public. Okay, to see this huge turnaround from Jace Carville is truly hilarious. However, what's another reason that Kamala Harris is losing? People just can't shake the fact that America is less safe. And the reason it's less safe is because we're letting in all types of violent criminals. In this case from Venezuela, we have a shocking piece from Fox News. Check this out. Bill, the details in this case, let me tell you, are just horrifying. This woman says she was held at gunpoint inside of her own home by these four guys. She says they tied her up, they threatened to cut her fingers off and beat her with a pistol. We now know that these four men who were charged are illegal migrants from Venezuela. This woman lives alone. She's in her 50s, just pulled in her garage in the upscale Briarwood neighborhood of Dallas. Police say the four suspects approached her, forced her inside at gunpoint, ransacked her home, stole money and jewelry. According to police records, the suspects only spoke Spanish and communicated through Google Translate. Luckily, police say she was not hurt. When they left, she managed to free herself, ran to a neighbor's home and called 911. Police matched a fingerprint to one of the suspects, Manuel Hernandez Hernandez, who named the others involved. All four charged with aggravated robbery and have ICE detainers. ICE tells Fox News that all four are from Venezuela. And according to records, Hernandez told investigators they're involved in a criminal street gang. Now, ICE would only give me the immigration history of Manuel Hernandez. And it's worth noting because in March, he illegally entered the U.S. from El Paso, and he has been arrested at least twice before this. So border czar Kamala Harris, at the behest of Joe Biden, has caused this entire scenario. And as much as she wants to just harp on the fact that, oh, Donald Trump held up the bill that would have fixed all of this, which is a complete fabrication, a complete lie, she owns this problem right now. All right. And oh, what about these dreamers, these poor dreamers? Oh, you mean the roving street gangs that have come in through our open border? And even though we have encountered them, we're released into the country because we're not doing any type of proper vetting. And apparently the Biden administration just doesn't doesn't care. But hold on, violent crime is declining, according to the FBI. And don't forget that one third of the states do not report their crimes through the new FBI system. So this whole idea that violent crime is down is a complete fabrication. And when you're importing violent criminals like this, there's a good chance that it's way, way up. All right. So this, of course, is Kamala Harris's and Joe Biden's America. And this is what she's running against. And this is why her poll numbers are tanking, because you can't escape reality, no matter how much profit up the media tries to do so thank you for watching don't forget to like share comment subscribe and stay safe out there people because they're coming after you